I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do, believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Covenant Living Broadcast. Praise God. My name is David Weeder. This is Lynn Weeder. She goes with me. <laughs> we kind of a team, in case you hadn't noticed. And we're so thrilled for you to be with us today. Praise God. We're continuing our war on fear. Glory to God. Flushing it out of the body of Christ. It has to take place. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated, and we need pure, unadulterated faith to survive and thrive throughout these last days all the way till victory of Jesus coming back. Praise God. You know, we are one day closer to the resurrection. And we're one day closer to my birthday. <laughs> and we're one day closer to Christmas for all of us Christmas people that like to count down like that. <laughs> Praise God. Let's have a word of prayer and then we'll get right into the word. Father, we're so honored. We approach your word humbly and yet with eager anticipation and expectation for the Holy Spirit to unveil, unwrap the principles and the truths contained in your word and for the power of the word itself to deliver every person that watches or listens to these broadcasts from fear in every area and every aspect of their lives. Praise God. We're so thankful to you for it. We're asking you to cause people to come across these broadcasts all over the planet and for it to produce revelation, insights, and concepts in their spirits and in their minds in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So be it. Praise God. Praise God. Well, are you ready? Now, wait a minute. Do you have your cup of coffee? <laughs> Got your Bible. Bible's more important than the coffee, but, you know, you don't have to have one or two. You can go ahead and have both. Grab your notebook and a pen, and let's get into the study of the Word. Praise God. Now, we're looking at faith and how faith works because if you understand how faith works, then you understand how fear works because as you know, fear and faith are the same spiritual force in opposite directions, producing opposite results, okay? And I know you've heard me use this illustration before, but somebody may not have. So, a very, very simple, easy to understand illustration about this is your fear of a dangerous animal, say a snake, venomous snake, your fear of a dangerous animal is your confidence or your faith in that animal's ability to hurt, harm, or kill you. Okay, you see it? It's very simple. Faith, fear. We use the term faith when it applies to things of God, things of the Word. We use the term fear when that force is applied and located in the things of the devil and in his lies. And that's, that's the differentiation in the words, praise God. So, we're looking at how faith works. Last week, we examined the fact that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, along with the fact that uh, fear comes by hearing and hearing of the lies of the devil. We also uh, pointed out that a lot of times the lies of the devil, you can find those lies when you turn on the mainstream media news or when you look on social media and you see all people fed peddling fear and doubt and doom and destruction and all of those things. A lot of times um, <clears throat> those are the words of the devil and fear comes. You know, we're going to see that. There's actually, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. Satan's just the same dirty old rat he's always been. And we're going to look at it here, maybe here in, <laughs> in this broadcast. But that's what, that's what he did with that loud mouth news anchor called Goliath. He came out and it says, he said the same thing. 
and it says that he said it day and night. That'd be the morning news and the evening news. And he said that he did the same thing over and over and over for 40 days. And it had the desired effect. We're, 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 we're going to look at all that, okay? But it's the same thing. There's no, it, he, he's a dead devil. All he can do is rehearse the same things. So we are taking the wraps off of that deception. We, we talked last week about the bull in the bullfight thinks the cape is his enemy when in fact it's the matador sneaking in and killing him while he's focused on the cape. Well, we're not ignorant of the enemy's devices and we're unwrapping that rascal right here in these broadcasts. Praise God. This week, we're going to start off looking at how faith is developed. And it's developed by meditating and acting on the Word of God. So first of all, I'm going to look at uh, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. And I'm going to go ahead and read it in the Amplified Bible. Now remember, faith and fear reciprocals. Okay, so we're going to look at this, and then we're going to look at the reciprocal of it, okay? Joshua chapter, eight, uh, chapter 1 and verse 8 in the Amplified Classic, This book of the law, the word of God, shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Now, let's look at the reciprocal of that. These lies of the devil shall not depart out of your mouth. You're going to hear them and you're going to start talking about them. And you're going to yak to your neighbor about it. You're going to call up your kids and tell them about it. You're, you're going to make five posts about it. Exactly. You know, you're going to keep talking about it night and day, you'll be thinking about it, talking about it. You're going to observe and do according to what it says. You're going to make your decisions based on that. If it says, you know, if you're thoroughly convinced it's going to rain, you're going to go buy out and buy the tarps and stuff. We, you got to go back last week and get the whole story on that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, if you're, you know, I'll tell you, let me, let me give you a little personal experience here. You can even do something that typically would be a good thing to do. But if you're reacting and acting on fear and the lies of the devil, it's not a good thing to do. Let me, what, what do I mean by that? Let me give you an illustration. About halfway through last year, I woke up one morning, and when I woke up, my throat was so sore I couldn't hardly swallow. I mean, I mean it was painful. And my first thought, I better go grab some extra vitamin C. You know, because, you know, everything has been going on and, you know, COVID and all that kind of stuff. That was the first, you know, <laughs> and uh, still a small voice right in here. He said, no, stop. Don't do anything. And I thought, that's kind of strange. I mean, vitamin C is good stuff, you know. So I sat there for a minute and I swallowed a few times and everything. And it got better and it was, it was just fine. And I thought, oh, well, he just wanted me to stop and let him work, and healing manifested. But then, she usually gets up a little later than I do. I'm an early morning person, and she's not. So <laughs> Yeah, well, I am a late night person. I have no problem staying up till 2 o'clock in the morning, and then he can take over at 5. <laughs> so anyway, a little bit later, she gets up. And she makes this comment. She said, you must have been really, because I don't, I'm, usually I'm not a snorer, not that you needed that information, but that's <laughs> typically not me. But she got, every, every now and then, if I'm just exhausted, you know, I will. Well, when she got up a couple hours later, she said, she made the statement, she said, you know, you must have been really tired last night because you just, you really snored a lot. That's where the sore throat came from. I don't typically snore. I snored a lot. My throat was sore. But that's not what Satan bombarded me with when I opened my eyes. My first thought was, ah, my, my throat's sore. I wonder if he's trying, I wonder if I was trying to be, you know, attacked by COVID. I better go get some vitamin C. Taking vitamin C is a great thing. But if I'd have put corresponding action it opened to that fear, it would have opened the door 
to sickness and disease. Now, just a little side note about all of that. Whenever he does snore, I'm not, oh my gosh, he's snoring and all that. Honestly, I am happy because that means he's sleeping soundly. And I was just thinking about that with a, our relationship in general. And like I said, this is a total side note, but it has to do with believing the best of each other. Mm-hmm. When we go through something like that, even if it did wake me up a couple times, I'm so happy that he's sleeping soundly. And when we do these broadcasts, people have talked about how we go back and forth. Well, part of that is when he's saying something, I value every word that he's saying. When I speak up to say something, he doesn't go, I was in the middle of something. He says, I value that. So and, and, just a little side note. And love never fails. And faith works by love. So you gotta you gotta foster and 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 grow that love for your faith to be strong. That's a whole, whole different teacher. But we're gonna get back to this verse right now. <laughs> <laughs> so the lies of the devil they don't depart out of your mouth. You end up yakking and talking about them, making 15 posts on social media, and you meditate on it and think about it night and day, night and day. Then whether you know it or not, you're gonna observe and do according to the lies of the devil. Take action of it, and then you will make your life poor instead of prosperous. Then you'll make foolish, foolish stupid decisions. decisions that you look back on. Why in the world did I make that decision? Because it was out of fear. And then instead of good success, fear will bring you disastrous failure. results and failure and poverty and cars break down all the time and wrecks happen and just one thing Emergency after another. Emergency room visits with the kids. Yeah. That's the way the system works. And it works that way all the time, positive or negative. That's what we're doing. We're taking, we're, we're getting your focus mm. off of the cape <laughs> and seeing the enemy. Fear is an enemy. You got to get rid of it. Glory to God. Now, you notice it says in this verse, you, should, um, you will observe and do. So now we're going to go over to James chapter 1. And Lynn's going to read uh, James chapter 1 and verse 22. James 1, 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And then uh, just one chapter over in, ver- in uh, chapter 2 and should be down uh, about verse 17. 17. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Now, don't get hung up on that word works, because it actually actually means corresponding action. It's exactly what I was talking about with the, um, the throat and the jumping up to go take vitamin C. The action in itself wasn't wrong, except it was corresponding. It would have been, had I done it, it would have been corresponding action to my fear, fear, and it would have brought the sickness and disease. It would have opened the door and brought it right through that door into my physical body. And um, we're going we're gonna to look at that in, in future broadcasts, actual medical studies and research that, that, that verifies all that. And so now we're showing you the scriptural principles behind it. And so now, what I'd like to do is show you an example of meditation on fear. And the, one of the most classic examples in the, uh, in the scripture is in Job, the book of Job. So go over to Job. We're going to start in, uh, in chapter 3, Job chapter 3 and verse 25. And I'm, again, I'm reading out of the Amplified Classic Version. It says, For the thing which I greatly fear comes upon me. And that which I am afraid befalls me. I was not or am not at ease, nor had I or have I rest, nor was I or am I quiet, and trouble came and still comes upon me. That's the way meditating on the lies of the devil and fear takes place. Now, what was he afraid of? Well, we've got to go back well, to chapter something one. Something about that. Uh-huh. It says that he wasn't at ease. He was stressed about it. He was basically worrying mm-hmm. about it. And it says, yet trouble came 
and still comes. He was surprised because he believed what we've all been taught. Exactly. If you worry about your kids, it's because you love them and you think that worrying will prevent that from happening. He was surprised. But that is actually how the devil works. But that's because he was focused on the red cape. That's right. That's he exactly thought the right. red cape was the problem. He thought he was being a responsible parent just the way everybody, you know, has been taught. Responsible. If you're a responsible parent and you love your kids, you're going to worry about them. Well, you'll get them killed. <laughs> it's, it's just pretty much... <clears throat> anyway, so what was he worried about? You can find it back in chapter 1. Um, let's see... Job 1.5? Yeah, we'll start in one, well, no, we'll start in verse 4. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one on his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So his birthday party. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sac sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt sacrifices according to the number of them all. For Job said... It may be, I don't know for a fact, but I'm worried about this. It could be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. So he was doing these sacrifices. Thus did Job continually. So he was worrying that his kids were cursing God in their hearts. Well, He didn't know, but he was worried about it. But then just read it in James. He put corresponding action to it, and it was good corresponding action. It was right. making sacrifices for his children, but it was being done out of fear and worry. Well, it's like when people pray over their children. Yep. Oh, God. Exactly. Help my kids. Keep them from making these mistakes. Forget it. You know, prayer is a good thing, but prayer out of fear <laughs> is not. I'm reminded of, you know, a lot of people will pray things like, oh God, they're all going to die. <laughs> what kind of what's he going to do that? with that? I mean, what's he going to do with that? I was like Brother Hagin telling that story about the lady that came and, you know, they had testimony services and stuff and the, the lady came and, and uh, gave her testimony during the church service and he's, she said, um, she said, you know, she said, the devil's been giving me a hard time all week. Bless his holy name. <laughs> What is that? I mean, you know, you know what she meant, but she had her praise misplaced, and it just, that's what she said. You know, he can't do anything with that. He can't do anything with worry. He can't do anything with your actions based on worry. Even if they're good, praying out of worry and fear doesn't work. It produces what, what Joshua said, disaster, the reciprocal, disaster, bad decisions, and failures. Well, and we talked about it here with children, but it can also work as far as finances go. Mm -hmm. If you are worried about your finances and you're praying over your finances out of fear, you're still acting in fear and you are more likely to make mistakes. And if you're holding on to the money and not paying this bill right now, because I might need this right here, then you're going to have added late charges then you're going to have additional fees here and there. And that builds and compounds. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just over your children. It's over finances. It's over health, which, again, later we'll get to actual studies that prove the Bible was right. We, we can see a, an example of this not only in Job, but even in, in uh, Numbers. Numbers. Uh, chapters 13 and 14. Now, for the sake of time, I don't think we're going to turn over there because I want to get to 1 Samuel. But Plus, there's a lot of scripture there. But please take the time. Go to Numbers and read chapters 13 and 14. They, Moses sent the, um, spies. the spies. Joshua and Caleb came back and said, whoo! Let's go take this land. This is amazing. The others brought back what the scripture calls an evil report. We can't do this. The giants, they're huge. Let's walk in wisdom here. I mean, you know, we don't need to be trying to go over and take this land away from these giants. Let's use a little wisdom here. Well, wisdom said, I gave you the land. Okay. So 
I'm summarizing this, okay? <laughs> but go check it out. Check it out for yourself. So they come back. Joshua and Caleb are like, woohoo! The rest of them are like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and the people decided that they were going to, I mean, they were ready to stone Caleb and Joshua. Because now, they thought they were leading them into a bad situation. Right. Now, go back and check it out. And it says that they meditated on this all night long, the, the, the children of Israel. They talked about the evil report all night long. And it was after that, they were ready to, to, to stone them. Mm -hmm. And so that's one example of med meditation on fear. But now, I, I, and I talked about this earlier, but let's go over to Sam, uh, 1 First. Samuel chapter 17. Let's put our eyes on this one because this is exactly mm -hmm. what is taking place today. 1 First, First Samuel chapter 17 and I want to look at verse 11. This is the, the account of David and Goliath, of course. Uh, verse 11. And the Philistine, well, the verse 10. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all of Israel... <laughs> heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. They were listening to the lies of the devil. Now, look at verse 16. Real quick, verse 16. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself for 40 days. Now look at verse 23. Verse 23, and as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spoke according to the same words. So put all of that together. You got, you got the lies of the devil coming from this famous news anchor. <laughs> and it's the same thing morning broadcast and it's the same thing on the evening news and he's saying the same thing for 40 days over and over and over and it produced the the it produced the desired results the whole nation of Israel was scared if you hear the same thing about COVID and the morning news and the evening news and how many people it's killing and you hear it for days and days and days and days and then you get the whole nation of the United States scared and if anybody says anything different, then they're being stupid and they're being arrogant. Yeah, it's like the children of Israel. They want to stone them. <laughs> you know, dear Lord. I mean, hey, hey, this is real life today stuff that we're talking about. And we're showing you, well, the Holy Spirit is showing you how this works. Praise God. And that is just about all the time yep. we've got today. It is amazing. I, you know, Brother Copeland talks about 10-minute broadcasts. I'm, 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 see, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, hey, don't go anywhere because there's something very, very important that I want you to hear. Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Weeder, and uh, you just heard an amazing message of faith, uh, an amazing message on the Word, but when you really get down to it, it's an amazing message about Jesus. And really, that's what all this is about is Jesus. You know, He is love, He's provision, and He wants a family. He wants you, you, <laughs> as a part of the family. You know, it says in Romans, Romans 5, that while we were yet sinners, Jesus came to this earth. Jesus, perfection Himself, came to this earth while you were a sinner, while you were on death row. The Bible says in, in Romans 6 that the wages of sin is death. You were a sinner. You were on death row. And Jesus showed up, set you free, and took your place because He wanted you as a part of the family. He wanted you as His son or His daughter. He loves you more than anyone else ever possibly could. And if you want to be a part of that family, have that perfect, loving Father, 
I would love to offer you this opportunity to pray and receive them into your heart. Accept that adoption. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And that's what we're going to do. Believe with our hearts, confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus, just like it says. And if you're ready, just repeat after me in prayer. Father, I come before you, believing with my heart and confessing with my mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for sending him to this earth, paying the price for my salvation. I receive it and accept my adoption into the family. I thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I know that you love me. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen and amen. Welcome into the family. Glad to have you here. <laughs> and now that you are born again, you can really truly say what my dad says, we always say at the end of the broadcast, and please say it with me, Jesus is Lord. Hey, now, hey, pay attention to that. Don't just, you know, think you're just watching a TV program and slough it off. Nothing that we talk about, not one thing we talk about makes any difference if you don't get that. Praise God. Jesus, there's, we don't just say Jesus is Lord to be saying something. Okay, that's number one. It is the single most important thing, not only in this life, but most definitely in the life to come. And it opens the door to all of the good things that we're talking about in these broadcasts. Absolutely, because, it, because you know, a lot of people accept Jesus as their Savior, but they don't accept Him as their Lord. There is a difference. You can accept Jesus as your Savior, which if you prayed that prayer with Ryan, you did exactly that. You'll go to heaven when you die, glory to God, praise God. But now, make him your Lord. Give him authority, final authority in your life, and let him teach you through these programs and others like them how to have victory in every area of life because he wants that for you too. He died for you on the cross in all of your success on this earth and in the life to come. Because he's always for you, never against you, and because Jesus is Lord. Lord. Thank you, partners and friends, for helping make this broadcast possible. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. You can also listen to our broadcast on iTunes. For more information about our ministry, contact us at davidweeder.org or call us at 1-800-988-5380.